Hey everyone, it's Jason. Welcome to another video for Primal the Awakening, our monster battling boss game. Um, so in video part one, I went over the rule books and went over looked at all the different components, like, the, the brief look at the components. So in part two here, I want to go through um, the different components, like a little bit of tokens, um, the crane, and then we're going to go through some of the basic, like, armor and item cards and stuff like that. And then that way, when we head into the um, then we can head into some more videos with the monsters and hunt hunters after that. Um, so we're going to start off by looking at some of the terrain cards here. Um, or tokens rather, not cards. So we have a sheet of terrain here. I haven't popped them out yet. Um, and you did see in the very initial video, there was an option to get a 3D terrain for some of these. Um, which I'll be doing that in an add-on video because it's not in the core set. Um, and it's just to add a little bit of element on the board, but it doesn't change the gameplay at all. Um, but here we have four sand tokens. Um, so sand token says, when you move from a sector with a sand token, increase the stamina cost by one. So your characters are kind of stuck in the sand a bit. They can't move too much. Um, so that's just by an extra stamina move. So this is going to make some of the boss battles more difficult. Um... And what's also fun about this is if you ever want to customize your own things, you know, maybe the sand is only available on the horn or metal creatures. You could add it to, like, um, the feather or frost or fire, whatever. You could add the different elements to different monsters in your own gameplays, your own expeditions, to make things a little bit harder. We have two big rocks here. These are actually plateaus. Um... So it says at the end of your turn, if you are in a sector with a plateau and terrain, you may decide to move onto the plateau. If you do, place your hunter miniature on that terrain. Um, when you're on the plateau, whenever a behavior card is revealed, you may immediately place your hunter miniature on that behavior card. If you do perform the following steps, cancel the effects of that behavior. Uh, skip the reaction step if it has a resolution card. Perform a ride, riding check. Uh, if you start your turn on a plateau, you must immediately step off of it. Place your miniature anywhere else in the same sector. No, only one player can be on a plateau. Uh, yeah, so this is kind of neat. So what it's letting you do is basically get on the plateau, like a big giant rock, boulder, whatever um, you want to call it, and then you can jump off of it onto the monster before it reacts and try and mess up the interaction. So what is a riding check? Let's, I'm going to jump to the rules and we're going to look at that really quick. Um, since we talked about it, if I can just get to that page. I'm going to hold this up here so we can read it. So you guys know, see it quicker. It says, when your instructor perform a riding check, resolve the following steps. Reveal the top card of the attrition deck and the top card of your action deck. Compare the attrition value to the revealed attrition card, the number of stamina icons on the revealed card. If the number of stamina icons is equal to or higher than your attrition value, you deal your weapon damage to the monster and choose a sector on the board to place your miniature in. If it is lower, you suffer damage uh, from the monster and place your miniature on the front sector. Discard both cards. So, it lets you cancel a reaction, which Depending on what your action is, it might be worth potentially taking a risk. But it also gives you a possible chance to do damage. Um, now, if you know the, if you have, there are some cards that let you look at the attrition deck. Um, so maybe you know it's, hey, I know it's weak, or you maybe you know it's card, card, you know, it's a four. Crap, we're never going to have four stamina. Because I think the highest card you get is maybe three maximum stamina on a card. So you know you can't beat it. So you might not want to do that. Um, so as you have KO during the consequence of riding, place your miniature in the front section. Um, the other cool thing about it is, um, if you do manage to dot, hit it and damage it, you can also then jump to a different area. So this could maybe let you climb up behind him, for example, uh, where he's not looking, jump up on top of him, do damage, and then land in, like, his flank, which might be his weak spot during that point. Um, and then attack him. So it's actually kind of a neat little attack. But again, it's up to you if you want to utilize it. Uh, the next three sets we have are rocks. Just plain rocks. Um, when you suffer attrition damage, you're in a sector with a rock terrain. You may remove that terrain token to prevent the damage. So you're hiding behind the rock. It takes the hit instead of you. Um, I'm going to skip the plants for a moment. We're going to look at some more physical terrain here. We do have four waters. 
Um, and we should never have, generally have more than four of any icon because there should only be one in each of the four sectors. Um, when you're in a sector of the water terrain, your sequence is limited to three instead of five. So kind of like sand hinders your movement ability, this is gonna hinder you to be able to attack more because you can still attack, you can kind of swim through and move quickly through it, but you're going to have to, um, you're gonna have to like, it's hard to like, obviously if you've ever, if you've ever been like waist deep in water, you know, like there's a lot less you can do. Um, no, a water train modifies your standard sequence but does not prevent any card ability or other game effect from increasing it further. So if you have something that gives you plus one extra um, ability, you can definitely keep using those. Um, there are some monsters that will have water spread. Um, you not place more than one water train coating in each sector. If you're instructed to place a water train coating in a sector that has one, place it in the adjacent sector instead. So yeah, there might be some boards that start with water, some that a monster produces water and then it can keep flooding the entire map. And then maybe there might not be a way to remove it. So therefore, by the end of the game, you might have having to deal with f all four sectors are flooded. Uh, so we could definitely make that interesting. We do have another rock there, so we can get four rocks. Um, actually, we get more than four rocks. I like, because we have two more on this one. But I think that's just the idea is because those are things you hide behind versus like uh terrain like the water is just to fill the entire section the sand fills the entire land it's supposed to be the idea of that uh versus a rock is a physical object uh down here we have two fogs when you move into a sector of the fog you become threatened um and i'm guessing the idea there is that the monster maybe can see into the fog but you can't see out so i'm, I'm guessing it's kind of the thought process there um, we have a couple more big terrains before we get to the plant. So I just want to go, we have four fires. Uh, well, there's a fire train in your sector, regardless whether fire is red or yellow, you cannot play cards in your sequence. Um, fire train can be placed on the combat board as a consequence of card abilities. When a fire train comes into play, it's placed on the board with its red side face up. At the end of the round, um... Flip any red fire terrain from their red to their yellow side. If your fires are yellow, remove it from the game. So we have this side and this when you flip over, it's yellow, so it's like dying down a little bit. Um, so it'll stay on the board for at least two rounds. Uh, if you're on a shark, you'll place a fire terrain, but already fire in that sector. Flip that fire to its red side instead, so it reignites it. Um, in terrain interaction, when you place a fire terrain, remove any brush in that sector from the game, uh, which these are brush tokens. We haven't looked at those yet. Um, it says remove any water from that sector, sector and replace it with fog. So it's kind of cool. So yeah, it doesn't like... Your first thought would be like, oh, I'm in fire. It's automatically going to hurt me. But you can assume it's like maybe like a wall of fire as opposed to the entire arena being on fire, a sector being on fire. Um, oh, I'm sorry. It does hurt you. I missed the part where it says all players in that sector, uh, burn. So, yes, you do take damage from it. I was like, that doesn't make sense. Um, but yeah, so it's kind of cool. It also interacts with the other terrain. What does burning do? Let's take a look at that quick so we see what we're dealing with. Um, in burning, when you suffer burning, you take the corresponding burn token and place it on your hunter. The next time you empty your deck, discard the burning token and suffer damage equal to your weapon level. You suffer burning damage, but already are burned, discard the top five cards of your deck instead. Note, damage suffered from burning is different than fatigue damage, and there's be different sources, so it must be dealt with separately. So if you get set on fire and you're burning, because um, you're in a fire area, you're going to also take your deck empties, you're going to take an additional damage. So how do you avoid that, though, would be right, the question. Um... I don't know if there really is a way. It says, because you're a shark, you'll place a fire train token there, and then all players um, in that sector suffer burning damage. Um, and it also says, you cannot play cards into your sequence. So if you're in a fire area, you have to leave it. You have to leave the area, otherwise you're not going to be able to do anything. Luckily, you're not going to keep taking more and more burn tokens, but still, it's not good. Um, all right, down here, we have two brush. Uh, to start your movement phase, if you're in a sector with a brush terrain, you may recycle a dodge card or the green ones from your hand to hide in the brush. If you do, place your miniature on the brush token. Uh, your turn pauses and the play passes to the next player in order. Um, 
Then name a player who has not yet played this your turn this round. When that player has completed your turn, leave the brush and resume your turn with the movement phase. Now, when your turn is paused, you are not the active player. Can not assist others or taunt the monster. When you resume your turn, you are once again the active player and play out the rest of your turn as usual. Note, only one player at a time can hide in the brush. Um, so yeah, that's actually a really cool little feature. So, um... Maybe you're the first player because maybe you had um, the Argo, uh, the aggro token, um, or it was just your, you know, came up, however, and you're like, crap, like, he, the monster's, like, right on me. I need to get to the other side of him to be able to do damage. Um, I don't want to have to spend two movement to get over there or whatever. Um, you could hide in, hide in the brush then and then skip to one of the other, skip to the next player's turn, and then after they're done, then you could attack, like, hey, you can turn them towards you, right? They're like, yeah, I can draw his attention. Cool. Then the act player goes, brings them towards them, and then now you can come out afterwards and attack. The other thing is you have to name it at that time, so you can't just pop up after, you know, the third player's turn and go. Like, you have to decide. Um, the only time it wouldn't make sense to do it, obviously, is going to be if you're the last player, because you'd have to name yourself and play immediately, because you have to play during that round. Um, it doesn't hide you till the next round. Um, cool. So those are our major, our major, um, big trains. And then we have some plants here. So let's look at those quick. We do have these two up here, which are called Wild Maw. At the end of your turn, if you're in a sector with a Wild Maw terrain, you are threatened. Suffer damage equal to your weapon level. So these are basically bad plants that are going to try and hurt you. Um... So how you avoid that, just don't end your turn there. But again, that could make... Again, this is all stuff that's going to make the game a little bit more difficult because you have to keep moving around. The next two we have here are called uh, Singeria. Singera? I'm going to hold that name up there. Uh, Singeria? Uh, to start your turn, if you're in a sector with this terrain, you may suffer damage... Uh, you may suffer damage equal to your level to draw one card. So this gives you an option to take damage um, to draw a card. So it, it's like, hey, it's a little uh, spiky bush or whatever. You can opt to like, try and grab, like, it's like, hey, I'm going to grab it and then grab the fruit out of there to eat it. Give me some more stamina or whatever. Let me draw a card, essentially. Uh, but you're going to take damage because it's all thorny. Like, the top one is just going to attack you. Um, we have one blue one down there, and we have another one up here at the top on this uh, card sheet. Oh, and my ding fell over because this don't bounce very well. So we have the blue ones up there, which are called uh, Bethanus. <laughs> at the start of your turn, if you're in a sector with this terrain, heal damage equal to your weapon level. So you have one that's going to do damage to you, one that's going to heal you, um, and then we have one that you can take damage to draw a card. And then the last one is the purple one, which is... Uh, Cy Cyricate. Uh, when you play this, and you play an attack card in your sequence, if there is one of these terrain in your sector, increase the damage of that attack deals... Increase the damage of that attack deals by your weapon level. Um, if you play an attack in your sequence, increase the damage of that attack deals by your weapon level. Cool. So if you have a level 1 weapon, you get 1 extra damage. You have a level 3 weapon, you do 3 extra damage. So again, just a little extra damage boost. Um, and then when you play into an expedition, um, they're going to tell you. So if I'm fighting Harum, it's going to tell me to use 3 rocks, uh, 1 Banith, and 1 Brush. It's going to tell me where to put them. And then it has an alternate one with just 3 rocks. Um, or if I'm fighting, um, we got a different guy different element so for fighting uh Philexer, um you're gonna have two rocks uh one bailiff and one cyrus in there or you could end up having uh two rock two cyanide and a fog starting in that one so that one kind of you can get into that fog you can deal with that um i don't think any of them start with some of them like the, the coral guys start with water in their terrain um and like the horn guys start with uh, some of the sand. I don't think anyone starts with like fire in there. Um, 
but yeah, so it's very interesting because then yeah, you can you play your own expedition. You can go ahead and swap a bunch of those around, um, or add different ones, or remove different ones. You know, kind of how you want to challenge yourself, um, which makes for some interesting stuff there. Uh, then we're gonna look at the rest of the tokens here. I just gotta flip to the page that has all the tokens listed, so I make sure I I know what all of them exactly are. So here we have. On the big circles are the Ballista tokens. These are for fighting the Awakened, which is the main, the big giant end boss of the game. So we'll worry about looking at more of what they do later. In the top first one, we have this little crown, um, which is the Storm Marker, which is also for the Awakened. Uh, he has special Storm cards. Then we have a little Stale Diamond, or Triangle, um, which is Hardening. So these are all different ones that will be utilized by different monsters. I don't know specifically which ones. Some might be used by more than one. Um, and then we have a confused icon, little dazed stars. We have the minus two there for the hardening, um, which are vulnerable tokens. So I think you can maybe, like, this will give the monster probably extra defense. This will give them extra weak points. Then we have some of these uh, little brown ones, which are called stone tokens. So there will be monsters that will use these. Probably the um, the horn guys or other ones. They're going to produce some some monsters. Going to produce a token that does something with stones. You'll probably be putting on your guy um, causes damage or something like that. And we're going to get sixteen of those. So we have a bunch more up here. At the bottom here, we have some more dust tokens again. Some guys will create dust. Um, then we have our four targeted. Or threatened icons, we have our aggro coin, we have our four KO. If we flip this over, you see the KO does change to white or red. All the rest are all the same front to back. We have a bunch of damage tokens to show hits. Um, and then down here, some plus damage. So this would be for your weapons, you might have something that could give you up to plus five damage. On the back side of those, we'll have... They go up to plus 10s. We have some 5 damage. So you start putting a bunch of hits or wounds on the monsters. You can keep track of those. Um, we have some more of those tokens. We have some 10 damage. We have some 1s and more some 5s. For our counters, we have a little triangle there that looks like a flag. This is our first player token. Uh, which is oddly surprising that it's just a little token. So many games use like some big giant gaudy thing. Or like a little extra 3D token to represent it. And he's kind of surprised they didn't put like a little 3D flag in here for that. Um, so that's interesting. And then on the back side we have the 5s turn to 10s. The 1s turn to 3s. The 10s uh, turn to 50s. There is a 1 down here though. We didn't see it's a 100 and a 200. And that's for the probably for the main boss. Um, and I'll keep track of all that. And then on this sheet, we have a bunch of ones, which are just counters. There'll be various things you'll have. You keep track of counters on things. Maybe you did this, did that, so we have some ones. We have our burning tokens we talked about. Our attrition um, defense tokens. Sorry, these are defense. They'll show you the same icon as your defense. And then to go right with that, we have disrupt, which will show it cancels defense. Uh, we have struggle tokens. Um... Sorry, we have struggle tokens are on the next page. We have acceleration tokens, which will boost a monster's struggle amount. Um, and then we have some dazed icons. So it's been some dazed, so basically this is going to cancel a blue card. Cancel is a defense card. Um, kind of very simplistic, um, simplistic graphics, right? So you can look at it and be like, oh, this gives me extra defense. This cancels this card, that cancels that. Uh, we have threes on the back of ones for our counters. Um, up here, we did have a little heart up there, um, which on the same side, which is a charge marker. So there might be various monsters that use that to keep track of that. And then our last token sheet has a lot more stuff on here. So we have a bunch of struggle tokens. Now, you know there's only six of them, because once you hit five, um, or I think once it was just five, then they, they activate their abilities. So you don't need to ever have like 10 on there. Once it hits so many, it'll disappear. The hourglass is our round marker. Keeps track of what round we're in. The little heart is the health marker for the monster. The blood icons are your stamina 
Um, so you can get the extra bonus if you don't, you have two cards in your hand, you can get the extra stamina bonus. And they just give you more because there might be, there might be other ways to get some of those. Um, the little hearts here are your depleted tokens. It's, it looks like a heart. It's actually supposed to be a cracked shield. That's showing that your armor is destroyed. So there's two for each character. So one, player one, player two, player three, player four. Um, and that's why lots is there's four of each, one for each player. Um, we have these red icons, which are trigger icons. This, again, is when you're doing your behavior cards. And you have multiple that are going to react at the same time. You can put them in order. But there's never going to be more than four at a time. There's only four slots. Um, we have the minus one for the, the picture of a card on it, which are strain tokens. So at some point, you might get strain, which is, I'm going to guess, means you draw one less card uh, each turn. Uh, let's see if I can just list that in the in the book here. Strain. When you take a strain token placed on your hunter, the next time you refill your hand, discard all your strain tokens and you draw one pure for each strain card. Um, cool. Um, I'm going to probably read over some more of these quick. We have this little circle down here. Look at that. That's our stun token. Uh, this is a keyword ability. When you stun a monster, place a corresponding stun behavior token in play. That card cannot, that card cannot be triggered this round. Then choose a player reveals up to two attack cards from the hand and deals your weapon damage to the monster for each card revealed. The stun token on the behavior keeps track of the stun effect. Discard it once it is resolved at the end of any round. You cannot place more than one stun token on a behavior card. If you normally stun the monster, but the monster is already stunned, do not place a stun. You can, however, move the stun to a different behavior card um, and still choose your attack. So that's pretty cool, right? To be able to uh, stun guys. Um, I try to see if there's any other ones we didn't look at. We had the vulnerable token. Um, well, let me go through the rest. We have two more. We have the um, bonus monster damage. They can get plus one. Sometimes they increase theirs. And then the X are the exhausted tokens. Um into what do the exhaust tokens do when you're instructed to exhaust a card place the token act this is considered to be blank for the rest of the scenario so it might end up going on your um like mastery card or something and then if we flip this back over the only thing that changes here is we have two staminas and like if those struggles can go up to three so you can get more than five tokens it's just they're gonna add up that way um but you're never gonna have so hopefully you never have like 16 on there, I guess. Um, monsters get up to plus two damage. In the bottom here, we did have some blind tokens as well. Um, so you have the blind status effect, and I did miss that on this side. Blind status effect is going to... I'm going to jump to the book here. Uh, when you flip blind, choose a peril card. That peril is considered blank. So confuse will stop a behavior card. Blind will stop their... Um, will stop them from using their peril abilities. Um, so that's kind of helpful to, until obviously they, they flip it over. Um, let's re-go back to some of these I didn't talk about. The disrupt tokens um, and the defense tokens are very simple. Uh, the defense, when you gain this token, place in your hunter, counts as a defensive card in your secret for the attrition check. Um, does not count towards a color reaction, though. And then disrupt token, when you place this on your hunter... During attrition phase, if you have a disrupt token, you must place it on the defensive card in your sequence, and it does not count towards that. So again, it cancels one of your defense cards. Uh, and then gaze, when you become gaze, next time you play a blue card in your sequence, discard your gaze token, because consider that card to be blank. No, you still, uh, the blue card still removes struggle as usual, but the text is ignored. Um, yeah, so nothing too, too crazy there. Um, try to see which other ones we didn't talk about. You know, we didn't talk about, let's jump back to this one here. We have the confused token. Uh, when you confuse a monster, place the token on the monster board until the end of the turn. And, and turn the monster to a sector of your choice. The next time the monster would activate a boost effect, discard your confused token instead and cancel that boost. Sorry, that's wrong. If the confused token is still in play, it's discarded. So we have one that affects their peril, one that affects their behavior, and one that affects them in general. Um, we have the hardening icon there, which is the little 
uh, effect there. Sometimes monsters become hardened during the game. Each time you convert damage into a wound, remove all damage from the monster currently sustains. Um, any excess damage is not retained. Monster cannot be stunned, confused, and you cannot inflict vulnerable. Um, yeah, so it basically sometimes they can go into like a hardened state and you basically you can't, you have to do something else to get rid of it. Maybe get rid of their, um, maybe have to get rid of their, the, um, their peril card or something or their objective card might we have to deal with. Um, and then we have the vulnerable, it's just times two. When you inflict vulnerable, place a vulnerable token on a monster board while it's vulnerable. When you or another player deals damage to a monster, you may double the damage. At the end of the round, if it is in play, remove it from the monster board. So some of these you have to like, you have to immediately try and do, otherwise it's not going to make any difference. Um, let's see if they had... I don't see stone listed in here. Because these are, like, the stone and the dust tokens aren't listed in the general keyword because they're monster-specific abilities. Um, so the stone is also card. The Arukem tokens, um, Harom uses them. Um, so they're specific abilities they'll have him do. I'm not going to go over too many of them. Uh, dust tokens are used by Torment and Dagger Rocks. Uh, charge token is used by Jer uh, Jekaros. Hardening track is for two different guys. So yeah, it's just some different ones. They're going to add extra abilities when they do it. And I'm not going to go over all of them right now. Um, uh, but we are now, that we've went through all the tokens, we're going to go through the basic, um, all the different armor and other cards there. So on the back of the armored cards, I'm going to flip this down a bit so we can... Move my camera forward so you can get a good view. We have a picture of an armor on the back. Every hunter is going to start with a basic armor. Uh, so we will have four copies of pretty much every type of item card in the game. Um, so I'm not going to keep mentioning that over and over. Because if there is less, I will talk about that. But it's going to show it gives you five health. Um, and that's all it does. You can upgrade to an armor for each element. Um, shit doesn't have any element, and it shows an armor. So if we jump up to the, um, the red scale armor for the fire, at level one, um, it gives you an extra health point. You start at six health. It's a start. If your health is critical, draw one card. I'm going to guess critical means down to a certain, uh, obviously it means down to a certain amount, but it say specifically, um, Hunter's health is critical and is used to half its value, rounded down or less. So that's not bad, right? You get down below health, you can actually gain extra card out of it. Um, at the start of your turn. Then if we hop up to level 2 armor. And one thing I love about these. So the armor art actually changes. Uh, same thing with all the weapons. They actually like, evolve as you level them up. That's not something they had to do, right? They could have just had the same picture throughout every single card, but the fact is they change it makes it look really cool. So this gets you up to 12 health. Um, start, you may suffer one damage. Your health is critical, or you choose to suffer damage from red scale armor, draw one card. So this will actually let you forcefully get that card draw. Um, so you kind of see, like, not just for the weaknesses of monsters, but you might choose a particular armor for its health value. You might choose it for its abilities. Um, and then we get to level 3, we get all super spiky. Start, you may suffer 2 damage, um, and when you're critical, you can draw 2 cards, and then discard a card from your hand. It gets up to 19 health, um, so pretty cool. Then we have Horn, which is the next element. We have Spine Armor, level 1, so it's still 5. Um, so same as your basic armor, but it says you may hold up to 2 stamina tokens. At the end of your action phase, gain two stamina tokens instead of one if you have two or more cards in your hand. So again, you really play a stamina heavy deck. This could be very helpful. So, so that's where we're gonna definitely see where each armor and we're gonna get the helmets and all the different stuff. We're gonna have their own unique advantages and disadvantages. I'm gonna scooch this over just a bit so I can kind of show off that one. 
Um, you can hold up to three stamina tokens, you get nine health. Uh, max of three tokens. Um, and your action phase gains stamina tokens equal to the number of cards in your hand. So this actually changes how you get your stamina, right? Before you just had to have two or more, now you can uh, get three just based on that. And then we have level three. You know, poke someone's eye out with that. Um, hope to three stamina and your action phase gain for three. When you suffer attrition damage, you may spend one stamina to reduce it by two. And since you can always have that sitting there at the end of your action phase, you can actually use that as additional armor. And it only gets 14 versus the fire one had 19. So you get less overall health, but you're going to be able to do more actions. In blue here, we have coral, which is like the water ones. So reef bound plate. When you inflict a wound, heal one damage. And that has seven, so it has the best starting so far. Um... But yeah, how you're going to get a heal for being a little bit more of an aggressive character. And then when we upgrade it, we're going to get some more coral forming all over that. Um, and it's always still the reef bone plate. Since when you inflict a wound heal to start, search your discard pile for a card of your choice and shuffle it back into your deck. Very nice. And then the third one. Um, when you inflict a wound heal three, search your deck for up to two cards and shuffle them back into your deck. And that has 16 health. We have purple, we have the crystal armor. Uh, six health, start. When you have three or more cards of the same color in your hand, draw one card. So this will give you a bonus for playing um, more cards of the same type. And maybe it might help you your next round. End of your round, you have to discard down to five, you draw back up to five cards. So you might be like, hey, I have I'm not going to overperform a really good attack sequence this turn, but maybe next turn I can play more, and you might keep more cards in your hand. Um, different strategies like that. We have level 2, which ups up to 11 health. If you have 3 or more cards of the same color, draw and reveal the color of that card. Switch your discard pile for a card and shuffle it back into your deck. Interesting. And then there's the massive extra digital like, crystalline tigers on your arms. Um, if you have three or more of the same color, draw and reveal the color deck. Switch your discard pile for that color and place it on top of your deck. So now you just go on top of your deck so you get to draw it during your next turn. And 18 health. In yellow, we have Thunder. Thunder, Thunder, Cat's Ho. Uh, the Thunder Armor, when you empty your hand, deal three damage. So, so again, one, this will be one of the ones that lets you be a little bit more aggressive. Um... You have one color horn, it's going to let you basically keep cards in your hand. You're going to get more stamina so you can try and play a couple more. This one's going to like reward you for playing all your cards. Um, so we have six health to begin with on that. At level two, getting a big extra pauldron on there. We have, when you empty your hand, deal five damage and 11 health. And then finally, I'll get that game. Like insect wings, which are really cool. Uh, when you empty your hand, deal 7 damage, right? 7 damage, if you could do it every turn, that's going to definitely take out monsters a lot quicker, right? That's pretty cool. Um, and then our last set is the Metal, the Graves. These are Iron Plates. Uh, when you reveal the first Attrition card during your Attrition check, you may pay 1 stamina to discard that card to reveal another one from the Attrition deck. Um, so far, probably my least favorite. Guess it could definitely be life-saving, right? You have your one stamina sitting around. It can be very helpful to... Oh, that had three attrition. I need to discard that and hope to get like a one. Um, but I, I'm not always a huge fan of... Here's a bad thing. Let me discard it and draw another bad thing. Because that other bad thing could potentially be worse. Um, so that's why it's not always my favorite ability. But we'll see how it, it might combine really well with some other different equipment too. Um, at level 2, we have 13 health. When you reveal the first attrition, during your check me, choose and discard that card to reveal another one from the attrition deck. Um, so is that the exact same? Oh, you just don't have to pay for it then. Cool. So that makes it at least a little bit more tolerable, right? I can always at least, um, at least get rid of it for free. Uh, and then level 3, we have 17 health and reduce any attrition damage you suffer by 1. So that's definitely not bad. 
um, and then it seemed like he do the reveal effect. So that is pretty cool for our armors, right? Get all these different styles. Now we're gonna look at the helmets, the helms. Um, we're gonna go through the same thing. We're gonna have level one basic, just gives us four health. So realizing right off the bat, you start with um, five, so it only gives you nine health right off the bat um, for just the basic helmet. If we look at our first fire one, we have the red stale helm. Action, discard the top card of your deck. If that card is a red card or attack, add it to your hand, max once per turn. Um, so kind of a risk-reward thing, right? You can end up getting an extra card every turn, but you might end up just emptying your deck faster. Um, and then we have the red stale armor. Or sorry, what am I talking about? Red stale armor. Is in. We have the level two, um, which is again, discard the top card deck. If it was a red card at your hand, max twice per turn. So these are actions you have to perform. They're not start of your turn. You get to choose to do them. But it gets you up to 9 health for that one. And then level 3. Get some, like, magma flowing through there. Some more horns on there. We have, when your health is critical, your weapon has plus 3 damage. So this is kind of cool. Because this is going to work very well with your armor. Um... Which is going to let you, when you're critical, you get to draw extra cards, right? So this will help you do that. So now you're going to end up, get down there, you're going to end up being able to boost even harder. Um, so having the same type of armor and helmet are probably going to work very well in tandem. But you can definitely use it with different things as well. Um, uh, imagine like this with the armor that said... Um, Find a card in your discard pile and put it on top of your deck. Now you know what that card is. You know it's red. Now you know you can draw it. So, right, you can make do some combos there. We have the Spined Helm, uh, which is the horn. And we have level one. Start, recycle one. So we haven't seen too many keyword abilities yet. But let's look at what recycle one does. Um... I can learn how to do my alphabet. Recycle X. So it says, this is a keyword ability. When you're instructed to recycle X, whatever that number would be, so one for this card, you may discard cards of your choice from your hand to draw that many cards. Some abilities may force you to perform this by saying you must in case you have to. This is what you do it at, this has to do it at the start of your turn. Um, so at the start of your turn, you have to discard one card to draw one new one. So, it's not always necessarily the best, but it can definitely be pretty cool. Uh, for health there. Um, we have level 2, which is going to start, start... You may discard a card with a printed stamina of 2 or higher from your hand if you do draw 2 cards. So, this, 1, gives you the option to do it. And 2, it has to be a higher level card. Though. So, it's, it's kind of like a good and bad thing. Um, and then we have level 3 there, even more gnarly. Um, I would love to see, like, pictures of the hunters with this armor on. It'd be kind of neat to see, like, each different hunter, like, wearing some of these different armors to see how they would actually fit. Um, so level three, may, you may discard a stamina token or a card with a cost of two or higher from your hand if you do draw two cards. Cool. In our coral, we have the Reefbound Helm. At the end of your action phase, you may reveal a blue card if you, from your hand. If you do, search your discard pile for a defense and shuffle it into your deck. Um, so yeah, uh, I just want to get the armor. Um, so yeah, the horned armor. This, I'm going to go back really quick here. The horned armor eventually lets you get... The level 3 seem to interact with the, ar the armor better. Because the red one, once you're critical, if you what the red like to do... The third helm work with that critical. This one lets you now discard stamina tokens. The horned armor lets you get stamina. Um, so then the coral eventually lets you do healing stuff. Um, and it's a secret discard pile for a card and put it back into your deck. It's like you put cards back into your deck. Um, so this is kind of working tandem with that. So when you reveal a blue from your hand, you may search your discard pile. So you see what level 3 does, because they see, seem to be the ones that interact the most with the armor. 
uh, refund helmet two. At the end of your action phase, you may reveal a blue card from your hand. If you do, you may either heal two or search your discard pile for a card of your choice and shuffle it into your deck. Cool. So this one lets you either heal or get a card of your choice rather than forcing you to have to do a defense card. And then level three, you got that seashells on there. At the end of your action phase, you may reveal a blue card from your hand. If you do, you may either heal three or search your discard pile for a card of your choice and place it on top of your deck. So this will work really well at getting extra healing effects and getting your um, your stuff back into your deck so you can replay it. With Crystal, we have the Crystal Helm. Start with the top two cards of your deck. Not bad, right? Not necessarily the best, but if you have... In itself, it's not going to do you a whole lot of good. But if you have cards that are going to let you draw a card, um, if you play a certain sequence, or if you have something that's going to let you discard top card of your deck, this might be very helpful just because in that way you can... Um, hey, I know I know I can... If I play a rag, then a yellow card, I can draw a card. But if that top card is going to be a defense card and I don't need that defense card, maybe you want to play them in a different order um, or do the abilities in a different order. Um, it's just kind of interesting combination there. Um, and then the purple armor, just as a reminder, has, if you have cards of the same color, you get to draw cards. So again, this is going to be very helpful combining it with that armor if you do those together because you're already going to be adding... The more cards you have, you're going to just see them. And then you know if you're going to want to keep them or not. You know. Cool. Uh, let's see what level 2 does. Ooh, that is. Just blings out in crystals. Um, one of the top 3 cards of your deck. And reorder them as you choose. Oh, that's fantastic. That's that's much better. Um, and then, that's nuts. Nuts, nuts helmet. Um, we have level 3. Name a color that was the top three cards of your deck. You may add one of those cards to your hand if it matches the color named. Return the other cards to the top of your deck in any order. So we're still getting to look at all three. Still going to rearrange them, but you can potentially get one of them. Um, cool. And then how does that work with that level three armor? Um, search your desk discard pile and put the card back on top of your deck. So if you have the level three crystal, you're already going to know what card is on top of your deck so you'll be able to specifically name that card so that's pretty cool um all right then we have thunder helm um just four health when you discard a red card from your hand generate stamina uh two generate stamina then deal one damage um so the yellow armor ha had to do with again discarding your hand to deal extra damage so so if you discard specifically a red Helps generate stamina, helps you reduce the cards in your hand so you can do extra damage. Um, it's such a thunder one, looks like. Ooh, it's some big old nasty horns on there. Uh, when you discard a red card from your hand to generate stamina, deal two damage. So thunder looks like it's definitely the attack. The attack color. And then level three, you get these big giant massive horns. Um, it's pretty crazy. Um, when you discard. I guess they're like antennas, because if the armor is like bug-like, this is kind of antennas. When you discard a red card from your hand, you generate stamina, deal four damage. So this is kind of cool. So again, if you have the thunder helm and the thunder armor, you're going to be able to do damage by discarding reds for stamina. So instead of using an attack card, you can be using your defense or your other cards, and you're still going to really do some damage. And once your hand empties out, you're going to be able to do some more. Um... Pretty cool. Because you could discard it for... Um, sta you know, not for movement. It would have to be for stamina. Um, then finally we have our armored plate. Or our metal. We have the iron helm. When you would suffer a wound damage that would knock you down. Prevent that damage once per game. Um, is it knocked down the same as being knocked out? Is my question. One sec. Alright, let's do a quick double check on Board Game Geek. Knocked Down is supposed to be Knocked Out. Um, or you would get Knocked knocked Down, I guess. would be the same. Your, your figure gets placed down. So, it was more or less a typo. But yeah, it's insane. So, that's pretty cool, right? 
uh, if you suffer damage and knock down. So the upside is that great. You're going to avoid getting knocked out once per game, which is super helpful. The downside being, unlike all the other abilities, um, I think they use multiple and multiple times. This is a one per time effect. Um, all right, and then we have Iron Helm 2. Oh my gosh, look at that. Games. Some giant spikes on the front. Uh, when you suffer damage, it would knock you down, prevent that damage, and draw one. Um, cool, and 11 health. And then our last one is level 3. It's now a game. It looks like a very diamond -o helmet, like Japanese in style inspired. Uh, when you suffer damage, it would knock you down, prevent that damage, draw one, and deal your weapon damage. So cool. So yeah, it's going to be... Um, it's going to be a very interesting effect. It's unlike all the other ones. You can use use multiple times. Every time you trigger it, you can use it more often. Um, move my box so I don't break it. Uh, but yeah, it's not going to go up. But then with the whole thing, with the, if you get tied into the level 3 armor, and you tied into any of the armor. Um, but the last one does say when you re reduce attrition damage, you suffer by 1. So this is going to be more... Um, if you kind of help prevent that attrition damage, if you do take the attrition damage, at least then you have a backup. So that's pretty cool there, right? Then we have a bunch of, um, item cards that you can also unlock. So we're going to go through all of those. Um, so each different element has two different items with each one having... Um, a very three levels as well for the most part. I think they all have three levels. Um, some are some are different. Other pieces of armor, um, essentially just as a gauntlet, I would call armor, but doesn't necessarily mean they have an armor value to them. Um, some are other different weapons. Some are different tools. So it's kind of all over the place on what they are. They weren't guaranteed necessarily like this one's uh, one extra armor, one extra thing. So we have the. Uh, Woltar Gauntlet. Woltar is the fire region. Uh, so this is our level 1 version. And that gives you an extra ability. So if you play a red card, uh, if you pay with a defense, increase the damage of the attack by 2. So it's kind of neat. So it gives you an extra little bonus there. You do extra damage by playing your defense cards. Um, when we up it to level 3. Now these ones, unfortunately, don't change from time to time. Um, so I'm not going to show it. Now, it's it's understandable, I guess. It would have been cool if they would have done that for all the art. Um, but, you know, you, you got to take what you can get sometimes. Um, if the attack was paid for... Oh, sorry, it's buying an attack card, not a defense. If you play an attack and it was paid for by an attack, um, either the red or the blue, um, you increase the damage by four. And then level threes... Uh, if you up it to that, you get to get six damage instead. Um, cool. That's your six damage. Not bad. Uh, and then we get a lava buckler would be the other item for fire. Setup. Place two counters on this card. So we saw them little counters earlier. When you suffer attrition damage, you may remove a counter from lava buckler and discard your top card of your deck. If that card is a defense, prevent the damage. Um, so kind of like random. Again, you can always do various abilities, and we've seen you can stack your deck a little bit more than others. Um, but at least a potential chance to always block the damage is never a bad thing. At level 2, um, it says when you would suffer an attack, you may remove a counter from Lava Buckler to discard your top card of your deck. If that is a defense card, prevent deck damage. So this is very interesting, because this is the first card we've seen that is literally... You might decide to keep a level 1, or you might decide to keep a level 2, because they have different abilities. The Gauntlet we saw, there. if you like that ability, there's no reason to upgrade it, because you're just going to do more and more damage. This one, if you're worried about attrition damage, keep level 1. If you're worried about attack damage, which is generally more damage, uh, because a monster could do 4, 5, 6 damage in an attack, versus attrition might only be 2 or 3. Um... You know, then you can do that. So that's pretty cool, right? We get kind of different options. And then if we jump up to level 3. We have. Um, if you would suffer attack. You may move a counter from Lava Buckler. If you do discard. 
either from your hand or from the top of your deck to prevent deck damage. So again, you're more worried about you taking the regular damage and attrition damage, uh, but again, it gives you some options to do it. Now this one, obviously, if you have level two, you really like it, level three is just better. So it gives you an extra place to discard cards from. Um, pretty cool. All right, then we have in Horn, we have Skeletal Spear. When a behavior card is revealed, you may exhaust this card if you are the if you are in the front sector. If you do, deal seven damage and cancel the effect of that behavior card. Um, so this, much like the buckler, is it's going to have a limited effect, right? Once you use the two counters on the buckler, it's basically garbage. Like it just essentially it's destroyed. Um, and the same thing here, although you can keep it using it again in the next combat or playing that. And this is the same thing you can keep reusing it, but. This is, I think the idea is supposed to be like you're throwing the spear. Um, so if you have seven damage, you can cancel the effect. If you Google seven damage, you can cancel the effect of the behavior. So yeah, um, canceling behaviors is always going to be very good. Um, so that's cool. Level two, when it's revealed, you may exhaust this if you're in the front sector. If you Google 15 damage. Um, so again, the little kicker on both of these as you have to be in the front sector. And then level 3 lets you deal up to 20 damage. It's a one-shot effect, but canceling a behavior, doing uh, a bunch of damage, is not bad. Although, again, being in the front sector also might put you at extra risk. The second horn card we get is Big Jaws, which is like a, a trap made from someone, some giant's mouth, giant monster's mouth. When the monster turns to your sector, you may exhaust this card to deal 2 damage for each uh, aggro in your discard pile. So if you time this right, you could do a lot of damage if you have a lot of cards in your discard pile. Um, again, you have like 5, that's 10 damage right there just for him looking at you. Um, that's pretty cool. You can even combine this with the other one if you have both horns. Um, although, I say that, and then I think... You can only have uh, one item at a time. Um, grab the hunter sheet here. Just double check that. I think, yeah, you might only be able to have one one item at a time. Yeah. So the items, I didn't look at the back of these. So the items have this little symbol. And you didn't look at the helm one either. Helmet has that one. So if we look at one of our character sheets, we have helmet, armor, weapon and then one for an extra item so we won't be able to have both of these although that would be pretty crazy right you could you know have them turn towards you to the front sector and do that but yeah um so keep that in mind you have a combination of the armor and stuff you have one of these items um and then if we do level three um sorry we didn't look at level two yet we skipped level two level two is uh, when it turns your sector, deal 4 damage, and then level 3 is it does 6 damage. So again, just kind of increases. For Coral, we have the Coral Trident. Your action cards are considered to have an additional stamina icon for the purpose of riding checks. So if you have some different plateaus or different riding things, you can, again, look ahead of time. Look at the camp. Oh, there's some riding things there. Or if one of your characters has the ability to do riding effects, because there might be other ways to do that, um, this just definitely maybe be a helpful extra thing for that. Um, then if we have the level two, we have when you are dealt damage to the monster through the monster through a riding check, increase when you deal damage, not dealt damage. Sorry, when you deal damage. Uh, increase that damage by four. Your action is going to have an additional stamina icon. That's pretty cool. And then the last one's going to be level, give you up to seven damage. Um, yes, that's fun, right? It, again, it's very, the items here kind of have very some unique or very specific weight areas you have to be or things you have to do. But if you plan right, um, again, you might be like, hey, I know I'm going to this area that has two plateaus. I'm going to try and use them as much as I can. I'm going to buy the Coral Trident so I can get a good advantage out of it. Um, then we have the Gauntlet of the Shell Blade, which has like a knife sticking out of it, uh, which is what it looks like. When you avoid attrition damage, add your top card to your discard pile to your hand. If that card isn't red, deal three damage. 
All right, so stacking your deck will definitely help avoiding attrition damage. Kind of going into defense. Uh, level 2 uh, lets you do 5 damage instead. And then level 3 is actually pretty cool here. It lets you do 7 damage, but it removes that red. So as long as it's a attack card. Um, so that's pretty cool and pretty powerful. I'm going to drop these guys down. We have the Crystal Spear for Crystal. Uh, start. If you have three blue in your hand, you may discard one of those cards to deal six damage. Um, I think Crystal also gains bonus for having the same number of cards. Uh, so that's pretty cool. At the start of your turn, if you have three in your hand, you may discard one of those cards to deal nine damage. If this wound inf inflicts vulnerable, um, inflicts a wound vulnerable. Cool. Um, that makes them so they can't do stuff. And then level three. If you have three blue in your hand, you may discard one of those cards, go 12 damage, and possibly inflict vulnerable. All right. The Shimmering Boots, uh, level one. When you move, you may name a color, then discard your top card of your deck. If that card matches your color, ignore the movement cost. Um, so you basically just go sacrificing a card, but it can be from your deck rather than your hand. Um, at level two, we have action move once per turn. Um, when you move, you may name a color, then discard your top card or deck that matches the name color. Ignore the movement cost. So what's the difference between these? Is this is just when you move using your regular moving ability, you can go ahead and do this. This now lets you still do that, but it also gives you an action to be able to move an extra. So now you could potentially move twice every turn um which i think is very powerful um then when we have level three we have you may name a color just drop the two cards from the top of your deck that at least one matches so this could be very um very good for doing that and then if we combine that with like um the thunder armor which lets you every time you empty your hand so it's when you empty your hand, I guess. So it's you emptying your deck. You probably don't want to empty your deck. So it's the only downside about that is you might empty your deck a lot quicker. Uh, so be careful. Uh, in Thunder, speaking of that, we have the Electric Whip. When a behavior card is revealed, you may discard a blue from your hand to increase its boost cost by one. Um, so that's going to be harder for it to trigger. So if it flips over, it has a boost of three, meaning it has three struggle-like tokens on it just to activate that. Now it has to have four. Um... At level two, um, you may what is it, you may discard a blue card to increase the boost by one. If you do, deal three damage because you don't have to do it, right? But if you opt to, because you could be like, oh, like in the first part, you might in the first level one here, right? Um, yeah, like, oh, it has a boost or has a it's a boost is three and it only has two uh, struggle. It's not going to activate anyhow no point for you to waste it right this one you might do that anyhow if you just want to deal that extra three damage um and then we have level three you may discard a blue card from your hand to increase your boost by one if you do deal three damage for each blue card in your discard pile oh that's nuts um so you get more more than plus again yellow likes to thunder likes to discard their hand so you have more cards in your discard pile the Electric Dagger, level 1. When you avoid attrition damage, you may choose and discard a behavior card in play. You do replenish these behaviors to out the top card of the behavior deck. I love that, right? Getting rid of them. Again, you don't know what's on the bottom of them. So, but, like, it might help you, like, oh, he's got three attack ones in there. I don't want to trigger three of them. He might play, avoid attrition damage. You might get rid of one of them. Um, could be very helpful. Uh, at level 2, uh, when you avoid Christian, you deal 4 damage. Then you may choose and discard a behavior card and refill it. And then level 3, we have when you avoid Christian, deal 4 damage for each defense in your sequence. Then you may choose one. So cool. So you could end up getting some extra bunch of extra damage out of that. And then in our metal, we have the Iron Greaves. Uh, your health is increased by 2. So that's kind of cool. Uh, when you are KO'd, exhaust this card. Um, interesting. So, kind of like the 
um, the helm where it's only going to be that one time effect to help prevent KOing. This will help prevent it, but you once you're KO'd once, it's not going to work anymore. Um, interesting. Uh, level 2 increases your health by 4. And then level 3 increases it up by 6. The fact is you could potentially get this and start 6 extra health is actually really cool. And then our last set is the explosive. Start, you may exhaust this card to deal 5 damage. If it inflicts a wound, confuse the monster. Um, level 2 lets you do 10 damage. And inflicts a wound, stun, and confuse the monster. Oh boy. And then level 3 is going to finally be... Um, deal 15 damage, inflict a wound, and stun and confuse the monster. So pretty cool. So that is really neat with all of that stuff. Then the last thing we want to look at are potions. So that's the other type of card we can get. So potions of this. You can carry up to three potions each turn. Potions are one-time effect. So the first step you can do is consume a potion. Um... And then the thing is, they go away. So all your armor and stuff, if you use it, exhaust it, whatever, your items, you still have them on the next part of the campaign. Um, but if you're like playing campaign mode. Uh, but the potions, once you use them, they're gone. You have to recreate them. So you're going to want to use them a lot more selectively. Obviously, if you're playing just a one-off expedition mode, um, you're going to want to definitely use all your potions during your thing because you're not going to need them the next, next time you can restart with new ones. Um, but you might have to just decide how you do it. So we do get, uh, four copies of each, I believe, of each level. So that way each player can, again, you can level up your potions as well. So we have Aylmore at level one. Consume, choose a player in your sector to heal to, if the current attrition level, the attrition that is on the top of the attrition discard pile, is one or lower that player heals four instead. Um cool right so you heal two uh heal two um or potentially four but it has to be a, a person in your sector um and you can't heal them once they're tailed like you can't take the damage and you can't then heal them um so again consume is at the beginning of your turn um level two they heal four if the attrition level is one or lower uh heal eight instead so again this might be I really need to heal this guy. I'm going to play four. I'd really love to heal them eight instead. That would be much better. You might have to wait until that attrition gets to a certain thing. Then you might be like, okay, now I have to move over there so we can do that. Um, and then level three, heal six if it's at one or lower. Heal 12 instead. Cool. Our next one is Evolk. Um, Consume the discard card from your hand to search your deck for a defense, add it to your hand, and shuffle your deck. Card replacement, not a bad thing. I love that these do change, though. They change different colors. Um, consume, start, or search your deck for a defense card, add it to your hand. So you lose that discarding part. And then level three, just a purple one. Uh, search your deck for a card of your choice add it to your hand then shuffle your deck if that card had a defense its stamina is reduced by one until the end of the round so that's something neat so now you gotta find any card but if it's specifically defense you gain a bonus we have uh Videa. consume this consume discard a card from your hand to search your deck for an attack card add it to your hand and then shuffle your deck so the last one good defense this is going to do attacks becomes blue Consume, search your deck for an attack card, add to your hand, and shuffle your deck. And then level three is search your deck for a card of your choice, add to your hand. If it's an attack, its stamina is reduced by one. So the same thing, just one for each. So you have a healing one, we have one that helps with defense cards, one that helps with attack. So again, this might depend on what deck you're playing. You're playing a guy whose weapon, or a hunter whose um, uh, weapon deals more in attack cards. You might want to have the attack potion. You have one that deals more defense. Or vice versa. You have a card that has more attack cards. You might draw the defense potion. So you have, I really need a defense. I can't wait to find it. So I need to just search my de deck for it. So it's pretty cool. Uh, helps fix some of them weaknesses in your deck. Um, Imperia. Suffer damage equal to your weapon level and draw two cards. Um, if you really need it, right? 
At level two, we have consume just to draw two cards, just much better. Um, and then finally we have level three, draw two cards, reduce the cost of the first card by one. Um, so very helpful as well. And drop those down. We have uh, hat rocks. Suffer damage equal to your weapon level. Your weapon gets plus three damage until the end of this round. So here you have a damage booster. Um, becomes yellow. Suffer damage equal to your weapon level. Your damage gets plus six till the end of the round. So your weapon's either one, two, or three, right? So it's not necessarily terrible, right? To take, take one damage, do six extra. Um, it's not your weapon's damage. It's your weapon's level. So that's a very, very good thing to remember. And then level three, suffer damage equal to your weapon level. It gets plus nine damage till the end of this round. Cool. And then our final potion is Ergen, uh, Dana Defense Token. So we've had, again, healing, draw attack cards, draw defense cards, one that just lets you draw cards in general. Um, then we had an attack booster, now we're going to get a defense card. So kind of one for each different thing. Level two, get a defense token, reduce the attrition damage you would suffer this round by one. And then this one's pretty awesome, right? Just straight up skip the attrition phase uh, this round. Um, the healing one's the only one you can, though, use on somebody else, which is interesting. Like, you can't use any of the other potions on anybody else. I think that would have been kind of a really neat, um, a really neat idea. Um, so there is one other type of cards, and they are these purple ones. So these are quest cards. I'm going to go over these in a different video. Just because this is spoilers for the campaign, I'd rather put it in the campaign video. But as you complete certain quests, it'll tell you to draw um, reward card 1, or it might say 7, which is a potion, um, or 18, which is an item. Um, then we have special 1 and 2, so we have some special armor. Armors you can eventually get. But yeah, there's all these different cards that you can eventually get potentially get and there are um i'm trying to find the first card here there are 22 rewards in this set and, there, and the expansions add more but again we will go through these these are going to be purple colored um but some are some are they're all different level items except for the special armors oh there's some potions in there too that do different things um but yeah, they're going to be rewards for campaign. We'll go over that during a campaign video just because I'd like to keep all the spoilery stuff together in one video. Um, the only other thing I want to look at in this video really quick um, is just a brief overview on the forges. I'm not going to spend too much time on these. Um, but so we looked at these before. So each level will show you your different items. So level one, level one weapons for each character. There are two items for each one. There are two armor and two items. What resources you need to perform them. The back side is going to be the same thing. So that doesn't make a difference. And then as the game goes on during the campaign. You will unlock um, the next level up. Which will have different stuff. Um, and the same thing you'll eventually get a level 3. There will be various parts in the campaign. Alright, so besides the Weapon Forges, which you'll unlock over the course of the game, and higher levels, there's also one for the Herbalist, which is for your different potions as well. Um, no, this is a level 3, but you'll have some, so like, each one's going to cost different plants. Um, the healing one costs two of any. Um, so yeah, pretty simple. And how do you get these, is the question. So, slight spoilers here. Um, I'm not going to get into too much. It's just while you're going through the campaign, while you're reading through the chapter, you're going to get, oh, set forge level to one, unlock the fire forge, gain two fire elements, and these materials. So this is uh, each player to craft basically a fire weapon or armor or item. You get the option of what you want. Um, and then on the next page, after you get through more of the story, you read some more stuff, you're going to unlock the herbalist and gain some plants. So the beginning of the campaign... Um, everyone's going to get a chance to be able to produce some of that stuff. Then, after you beat certain monsters, and again, I don't want to get too much into spoilers, so, like, if you beat part one, 
you unlock uh, the Horn Forge. You can gain Horn Elements, materials, some more plants to do some X. And this is current chapter is either chapter one or two. Unlock quest four. Otherwise, unlock quest six. Uh, and then let's say if we unlock quest six, for example, and then we beat that one. Now we can unlock the Crystal Forge. Um, versus if we unlock four, it's still going to do the Crystal Forge. So either one just gives us a different two options. Um, but they do have different amounts of materials. Um, so this one you're going to get two blue and one gray um, versus one and two. And the same thing, the plant's going to be a little bit different. So each different quest is going to award different things. So playing through the different quests in different orders will let you do different stuff. So yeah, you start off with the ability to unlock the fire stuff. But then after that, it's probably going to be like, Probably going to go to the horn, and then it looks like you're going to go to the crystal. So they might kind of go in the same direction, but depending on what quest you decide to choose and take, you might end up block certain elements before one. You might opt to be like, oh, I have access to um, the horn, you know, one of the horn monsters, or a crystal monster. You might choose to take the crystal monster first, because maybe the horn one has... Um, a weakness to crystal or you need to get some extra elements you can upgrade your fire to then go fight the the coral one or whatever um so different options get you different options to do this but it it's along with only getting to the hunters you get to see all their deck building options as well um this uh, with the weapons and screws we'll go through them in that video you're gonna just see all the different combinations you can do so playing the game you're not going to always take the exact same... I mean, you might. You don't have to take the exact same equipment, items, and stuff every time. Um, campaign is going to be one thing. Is you have to beat things to craft them. If you're just doing your own expeditions, you can then choose to mix and match. Which might, again, if you're having struggling during the campaign, this might be an option to, like, hey, go through and try some different combinations out. Like, like just, you know, what does the Iron Plate Armor at level 2, you know... Yo, know, how well is that going to work with the, you know, Gauntlet of Shell Blade? You know, maybe those two work really well together because they both ha have to do with attrition damage. Um, maybe the Lightning Weapon, the Lightning Weapon is going to work really well with the Lightning, you just want to do all Lightning stuff. You know, there's no monsters that have a, a strength to anything, so you're not going to get weaker by picking something different. But having different stuff, again, also um, different having the same or having weakness cards towards the monsters um will let you actually add or remove cards again let you edit your deck a little bit differently so if you only go one type of element you might not be able to necessarily hit all the weaknesses or you might obviously if you have if it's weak to fire you might be able to have all four fire items and get get the double weakness off of it but maybe if you have two fire and like two other different elements you might not hit that second weakness um so again that might even make a difference as well all right so that's what we have for this video um the next video we are going to start jumping into the hunters um we'll see how long they take i might do all four at once or i might do two and two um if you guys have been sticking through these videos i appreciate it uh hit me up in the comments um you know if you're liking my videos just so if you have questions see you guys later bye